Hey guys, how are you? And welcome back to my channel. On today's video, I'm gonna do and just go right in because these are long ones, even though you love them. This is my project progress from May to June. If you guys are new to this project progress, what I usually do is that since I've been doing project pan for a while now, but sometimes you can see that project pan can just take you back in a way because all the powder products take different time spans to finish, but they take a long while. It's not the same as liquid products. So for you to finish an eyeshadow palette, you have to take basically a year to finish it up, sometimes even more, and then you get bored of it, but not only that, is that you will neglect every other palette. That happens with bronzers, with highlighters, with anything that's powder, if you are a person that has a lot of things in your collection. That's why I started this series. So what I do is I take four to five eyeshadow palettes, four to five bronzers, three highlighters or four highlighters, and four to five blushes. That way I can rotate them monthly, but I can get a lot more use than just by pulling them out from my drawer. On this one, I'm gonna choose a lot of products. Most of the products, I got them, and since I got them, I've never used them, so they're basically new for me, even though I've had them for a while in my collection. And a few of them, maybe three products, are old that I haven't reached for a ton. So if you wanna see the products that I chose to use from today till one month, then just keep on watching. As always, I have a list, so I'm gonna start with the five palettes that I chose for this project pan. Okay, so every single one of them I've used, but this one, it has to be the one that I reach for the least, even though I used it, and it was my least favorite to use. I like this eyeshadow palette, but I don't know why I don't reach for it as much. This is the Huda Beauty Desert Dusk palette that it has been loved, because I've actually used it more than I thought I was gonna use it but I'm not obsessed with it. There's something about the formula when you touch the powders. It doesn't feel as amazing as it performs. So there's something when I'm going in with the brushes that I do not love about this palette. I said that I was gonna try and use the purples. I'm a basic bitch. I'm a basic person. So I don't really reach for something that's not the craziest that I do on my eyes is always either a blue or orange. Unless it's that, I always go for the same things and those are just new shades. I wish I reached for it more, but then again, I will keep rotating my eyeshadow palettes and I don't have infinite of them. Then Natasha Denona Aries palette. This is an all time favorite palette. This is just a staple in my collection. I know I'm not gonna buy a backup even though it's on sale, so just please pause this video go to the link that I have down below of this palette and buy it on sale because it's about 30 something dollars and it is worth it. For these eyeshadow only, it is worth it and I love all of them, even the topper that I have right here. These eyeshadow, I've used it so much. I've used it a ton. This is a beautiful palette. I love how big the pants are. This will be loved. I know it because it's just the formula is amazing. I love the pigmentation of the blue. It's just beautiful. So yeah, if you can, just go reach for it. And I love five pan palettes because they're easy to travel with. I just love Natasha Denona. I know that last time I said that I don't like putting my fingers into the palettes or whatever, but I love her eyeshadows because uh, the mattes are insane and you don't need to put your finger in them. It's just they're beautiful, they blend themselves, and the formula, it's just amazing. It's like almost nothing else I've tried. So that one I can count as success because I used it a ton. Those pants are insanely huge. So I didn't need pan, but I'm just happy that I used it. Now, this one is the NARS Narcissist Loaded Palette, and this was limited edition. I don't know why, because NARS need to have like three palettes cool tone, warm tone, and a neutral eyeshadow palette and keep them in stock. Just like the one that they have now, which is a pink packaging. That one should be permanent as well as this one because this is one of the best eyeshadow palettes that I have in my collection. I didn't know that I was gonna hit pan because these were basically new. I used it a little bit when I first got it, but I, it's not like I reach for it every day. 
but I went ham on a few shades. And I can tell you right now that a shade that I didn't even touch and I haven't touched, maybe just for swatching, is this one right there. But you can see that I hit pan on this one. And this one, I feel like it's close as well to hitting pan. And I use this shade a ton because that's just like a peachy type of color. And the black one is always helpful. It was the black that I used for all these looks because the other two do not have a black. It's just a beautiful, beautiful palette. And I'm not a silvery shade type of person, but that silver right there is just, it's stunning and it looks beautiful on the eyes. So this one, I can consider it loved. Like I told you guys before, the purpose of this is to make my palettes and everything look loved. Another thing that I love about these projects is that you fall in love with some formulas more than others. So the Tartelette formula, the eyeshadow formula for the Tartelette palette, I only have these two. I'm obsessed and I can say that I looked forward to using them. I looked forward to the scent, to the blendability, to the just the softness of the shadow, the application, the pigmentation, the buildability. It's just, I, in a way, I was surprised that I was reaching more for the Tartelette in bloom now for the Tartalette Toasted, even though I love this one. And I know that this one will get back to my rotation. But this was a super success because I hit pan in two shades. So I hit pan in Sweetheart and Smarty Pants. And I love having Charmer and Creamer, which are the two light shades right here because Charmer was one that I could set my entire lid with as well as Flower Child. I love using Jet Setter. Most of them have no longer the Tarte engraved on its shadow. Funny Girl is my least favorite, even though it's one of my favorite colors, because I don't know why mine is so dry that it doesn't really translate as pretty into the eyes unless you use Fix Plus. I use Fix Plus sometimes, but I'm not a every shimmery shadow Fix Plus user type of person. But the rest of them I'm obsessed with. Just opening this one up, the scent drives me crazy. I love it. And then I realized, because it's the first time that I realized this, is that you get three looks out of the palettes. They are meant to be used this way. I bet that's what they had in mind, even though you can do whatever, because makeup is just for fun. You can see that right here, it's just like a quad. Then the next one, it's like a quad. And then the fourth one is like a quad, and they go perfectly together. So you basically have a cheat sheet for three eyeshadow looks and you can make them super deep with the shades on the right and you can have the highlighter shade the closer you get to the left so i love that i love that so the tortellet in bloom for me is one of the best palettes i have in my collection and now i'm planning on carrying it a lot more on my kit or when i don't know where to start these two transition shades make my world better and then another success this wasn't as good as a success but the favorite eyeshadow of all of the ones that i used this month was definitely cashmere and it's this peachy eyeshadow and this reminds me a lot of either peaches and cream or peach smoothie from makeup geek which those are favorites all-time favorites and I love S'more as well because this was good to set my entire lid. It's just a beautiful palette. And again, you have the cheat sheet on this one as well. Seven of the shades that I have right here from the 12 shades don't have the Tarte engravement that they did. And this one, this was a new palette because these I bought and never used. For me, that's good, good progress. And... I wouldn't have it any other way. So this project progress so far, I think it has been the most successful so far because I hit pan in four of the five eyeshadow palettes that I picked. Okay, so for blushes, I had four, but one has two shades, so that makes it five blushes. Let's start with the one that comes with the two shades and it's the NARS Fairbore Blush. This one, it's the Dual Intensity Blush and you can see right here, when I bend it, that this shade right here has a huge dent. And this was my favorite blush to use. This one, on the other hand, I used it about twice just to deepen some looks. I do not love the, those colors for my cheeks. But this color, it's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I never swirled them together. I think that would have been a good idea. 
and I just thought about it but this color by itself is a beautiful pink but it's just a warmer pink it's beautiful it reminds me a lot of rosy outlook from mac but the formula is different and i love these dry i know that you can use them wet it's just not my favorite way to use them this one that i have right now i thought it was gonna get more love from me but it really didn't i don't know why i love the color it's a tangerine it's an orange shade and you guys know that i love orange everything from my makeup and what i found for this one is that since i was basically pale most of the month this looks super deep on me and it's weird i always use Tosh mahal and that one is supposed to be just for deeper skin tones but i adore it on my skin i just i don't know i wasn't a fan of this one i used it about three to four times and i wasn't obsessed with the look when i used it so i'm gonna keep playing with it a little bit more this is a limited edition nars pure hardy collab in the shade rotone another of the nars big blushes and limited edition ones was the realm of the senses and this one i use even less than rotone this was not loved at all and when i did one time i swirled it and the other time i went for this one and i like it i just i think it's the way i stored this because i have two drawers for my everyday makeup drawers these are big so when i put them in the drawer and i try to close it they don't fit because they get hit every time i close the door so i put it in another little container and i put stuff on top so this one i think i didn't reach it that much because i didn't see it but it's a beautiful blush it's just that i was lazy about it and i chose another one instead of it so the pink one from nars that i showed you first and this one were my two most used blushes and you can see the brush strokes on this one. This is Indecent by Urban Decay. And this is the Afterglow 8 Hour Powder Blush. And I use this one a ton. This was the one that I used the most, I think. And sometimes just put this one right here. And then a pop of pink with the NARS one. So those two were super, super loved. And I'm really happy about it because this one... I bought it, swatched it, I think used it once and put it away and never used it. I love, love, love the formula. It's powdery, but it's pretty. It, it's pigmented, but it's super buildable in a nice way. So you don't get a punch right away. Going to the highlighters now, I chose these two. The first one is the Dior Amber Diamond. This was a uh, permanent, but it was discontinued a while ago. And I use this one a ton. You only need the tiniest amount. This is pigmented and beautiful. I don't know why they would discontinue it. And I know I will rotate it back. Even though it doesn't show progress, you guys know that highlighters do not show progress that well. You can't tell that much when you use it a ton because of the way the powder is pressed. But this is beautiful and if you have this in your collection, pull it back out and love it. And you have different choices depending on how dark or light you are. So what I would do was use Amber Diamond all over my cheek and the places where I wanted it to pop, I would use the Charlotte Tilbury Bar of Gold. And this one you can see, I wanted just to erase the engravement and it still has it but way way less it's almost gone you only can see the C, a a little bit of the C. but this is a beautiful beautiful highlighter and it was being neglected from my collection and it's gold but it has sort of a little bit of silver in it i adore this highlighter also and i'm happy that i pull it back out and it's super pigmented and i truly truly like it and the way it picks the light up okay so for bronzers i had a mishap because I had the refined golden bronzer on my project. I forgot about it. So I put it away in my bronzer drawer. I didn't put it on my everyday drawer. And I forgot about it. I have to be tan to use this. Because as you can see this is deep. So it would suit me right now. But I already chose the products that I want to put on the next project progress. So this one was a definite fail for this project. This one I used it a lot. You can see that I have hit pan on it. And a little bit of it fell out because you know how this formula gets when you get to the grid you can remove the grid and finish it completely because i've done that before but this one is already well loved so i'm not really upset that it broke i know that i will get this formula in the future because this is one of my favorite formulas of bronzers 
and I love, 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 love the oranginess, but the subtle satin finish of this kind of bronzer from Givenchy. This is the Healthy Glow Powder from Givenchy in the shade 3, and I really like it. I think I could have used it some more, but I did use it, and sometimes I can't even wear it as a blush, and I adore it. And then the most successful bronzer from this project was the Bali Sand Powder Bronzer from Becca. And you can see that the waves are almost completely gone. And this one had all the waves when I put it on this project. So this is the one that I've used the most. This has a little bit of pink in it and it's a light bronzer. But I prefer light and buildable than something that's just super high pigmented and dark from the beginning when it comes to bronzers because bronzers can make your makeup look shitty real quick so you have to better go with a light hand and start to build it than just tapping the brush like 10,000 times for it not to look muddy so overall this was a success for the products that I chose only like two or three of them were not that successful, but none of them were so unsuccessful that I want to remove them from my collection. I found a few lovely pieces that I know I'm going to pull out from time to time, even when I'm doing project progress. So now I have here the list of products for this project progress. And like I said, this one is going to be awesome because I chose products that I basically haven't used. And I chose only two that I've used before a ton in my collection, but I've forgotten about them because they're all in my collection. But most of them are things that I haven't used. So this is going to be a good way to getting to know the product better. So I'm going to start with the five palettes and I always choose a small one. So that's the one that I'm going to show you first. You guys know that if I could only have one eyeshadow palette, it would either be my Dolce Vita palette from Charlotte Tilbury or my Makeup by Mario palette. About a year ago, or less, but a long time ago, I made a huge palette haul and I got this one. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Vintage Bam palette. This has been untouched. I haven't touched this at all. I swatched it and that's it. And it's ironic because it looks super similar to the Dolce Vita one and that's beaten. That has pan in I think two shades and I'm about to hit pan on the third one. I know I'm gonna repurchase that forever and ever. It was the palette that I used on my wedding. I adore that. So I bought Vintage Bam thinking that I was gonna use it the same, but I bought it and haven't felt inspired to use it. So this is the perfect time to just make myself reach for it. Maybe I can use it for an entire week and just get a lot of use out of it. And it has a topper that I think it's it can be even prettier than the Dolce Vita one, but I let you guys know how the formula differs if it does from one palette to the other. So the first one, the Vintage Bamp palette by Charlotte Tilbury. The second one is the one that I'm wearing on my eyes today. And this is the Natasha Denona Sunset palette. And these I've used for the past two days. I want to show it a lot of love because these are my shades. I know that I would love for it to have a cream color, not as deep as this one. These I can use as a transition. I know the camera picks it up a little bit more light than what it is, but it's sort of a peach and cream type of shade. It's not that brow bone color that I would love for this palette to have. And that's why I always love to choose five palettes. I don't need a black, but I always love to have a black in the rotation for when I wanna do a look like this one. And I also like to choose a palette that has a brow bone shade just to set my entire lid. I've used it a couple times. I've swatched it a ton of times because I love playing with my makeup on my hands but I haven't really used it, used it. I'm thinking about, maybe if you guys want, I can do a three looks in one with this palette. If you guys would love to see just a three in one, whatever I get inspired that day, I can do, but just a three in one. If you want to see that, let me know, because I know these palettes are expensive, and some of you I know want to get your money's worth out of it like I do. Like I said before, one of my favorite palettes, if I had to only keep two palettes, this would be one of them. This is the Anastasia and Mario palette. And I've hit pan in three shades and I know I'm about to hit pan in a fourth one. You can see it right here. This has been 
extra well loved. I was putting this one in the back of my drawer because I didn't want to use it because I know that as soon as I finish it, I'm not going to be able to get it again. This is a palette that I would repurchase time after time. It's by far the best formula that Anastasia has ever done. And then after this one, if this was permanent, this would be the best. But after this one, the Soft Glam Palette, it's also an amazing one, formula-wise. But this is so buttery that it takes it to the next level. The best formula eyeshadows from the Soft Glam, it's how these all are. In my opinion, this is perfection in a palette. And my goal on this one is maybe to hit pan in two shades. And I'm planning on wearing this blue as a smoky eye because I adore that blue. I think I got it last year or maybe this time that I went to the US. I don't remember, but I haven't really played with it. I think it was this year, but I haven't really used it. I've used it twice and I love how soft they are. And you guys know, you guys know that I die for a matte a smoky look or just a full matte look. This doesn't have any shimmers in it. It's just matte. I know this will play amazingly with the Sunset palette. It will just go amazingly also with the Makeup by Mario one, with the Vintage Vamp. So it's just, I choose palettes that maybe are similar in some ways, but they complement each other perfectly. And this is the Just Peachy palette by Too Faced. I got this one because of Mandy Makeup Artist. I adore her. She's one of my favorite YouTubers. She inspires me. She's sweet she's beautiful so she loves this palette and that's the reason why i got it and then i never used it and the last one i'm excited that i pulled this one back out because this was my favorite high-end palette when i started collecting makeup but you can see right there that i've used a ton of those eyeshadows you can see the dent and i love that black it's the black that i'm wearing on my eyes today I love that it has Foxy, which is one of my favorite shades in the Urban Decay Naked Basics. Half Baked is one of the most beautiful gold eyeshadows you will ever try. You know, people used to love the Naked one. When I got the Naked 2, this was the first Naked eyeshadow palette that I got. And then I got the Naked one and I thought I was missing out. And I almost never reached for that. But this one, I kept reaching for it tons and tons and tons. I know that I'm not the kind of person to go for cool tone looks, but this was so, so loved when I first got it that I think I will get inspired by it. If you also want to see sort of a throwback tutorial using this palette, please let me know and I will happily do that for you. I'm sorry for my fake tan mishap on both wrists. It wasn't meant to happen, but... For bronzers, I chose four. So the first one that I chose was Laguna. This is the one that's holy grail, but I haven't used in a while. And I love this, and I am hoping to hit piano on it. So you can see it right there. This is basically a cult favorite, and I know I will use this one a ton. I've gone through Laguna bronzers before, so that's how much I love it. I showed you guys on my recent haul that I grabbed the Chocolate Soleil in the shade Medium Deep and this is what it looks like and I really really want to try this because I already love the medium shade that everyone loves. Oh my god I love the scent. So I want to see how this one works on my skin tone but if I can build it up for someone that, that has a deeper skin tone or if it's just too deep on me and I have to make it live permanently on my kit. I just want to use my products when I just get them, since I'm doing project pants and project progress, the only way that I can use them, the things that I hold, is just putting them on my projects. This is another one that's basically new to me and I know I've shown it in a favorites, I think, or I wanted to show it in a favorites when I first got it because I couldn't put it down. But this is the nude bronze light and I don't want to use it and cheat on my projects, so that's why I put it on this one. Because I really, really want to use it a ton. This is beautiful. And I love the luminosity in these bronzers. They are matte, but they have sort of a light to it, a sheen to it. Like the Healthy Glow from Givenchy. And this one I love because it doesn't have warmth in it. It's just the perfect color for me for every day. This is the shade, I don't know if I said it, but it's nude bronze light. And then since this baby came back out... And I used it only about four times when I first got it. 
and I was so afraid to use it because this happens to me all the time. I buy something that's limited edition. I'm afraid that they it will get discontinued and I won't be able to touch it again. So I don't use it as much because I want to save it. Whatever, it's just crazy. So since I already finished my Physicians Formula 1, I wanted to pull this one. It smells sort of like coconut and cinnamon. It's just beautiful. So if you can get this one, I think it's going to be permanent. Get it. This is a stunning bronzer used because I've had it for over a year and a half or a year and a half and I haven't really used it and now I feel safe using it and that's stupid anyway if you buy something even if it's limited edition enjoy it some youtubers can just not use limited edition because they're doing youtube videos and they don't want to show it because it's limited edition or whatever and they get a 10 for PR but I didn't get a 10 for PR so I have to make it worth the purchase because Marc Jacobs is not cheap and this is one of the most stunning bronzers that I have in my collection. So I want to just show it some love. For highlighters, I always choose about two highlighters. But this time I chose four because these are new ones and I really want to try them more. Anastasia released the Amarisi Palette collab. These should be made permanent. I'm just saying it's the highlighter that I'm wearing today on my face. I don't know if the lights are washing it out. But I adore this. You can see right there where I put my brush the most is in the middle. This is one of the most, most beautiful shades of highlighter that I have. And even though it doesn't look it, it's super unique. It can be as blinding as you like and it can be as subtle as you like. It's the inner corner highlight that I'm wearing on my eyes today. It's beautiful. And the rest of them, I have a review that I just posted for the new Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector releases and the first one that I chose is vanilla quartz and if you want to see my thoughts on this you can check that video out another one of the shimmering skin perfectors it's the shade dreamsicle which is now holy grail in my collection on the side how much I've used it and I plan on using it way more this summer it's just beautiful I use it as an eyeshadow as a blush as a highlighter you can build it up and it looks stunning on the cheeks and the formula it's beautiful and then last but not least for highlighters i chose parisian lights and this one also you can see on this side how much i've used it and it's a pretty pretty color so i chose those four because they're not the same shade at all and that way i can use each one for seven days and that would be good for me and I, that way I can show them a lot of love. I don't have that many face palettes but I want to start incorporating them into these projects without taking room from the blushes, the bronzers and the highlighters because I want to review them as palettes. This one is another new one and now I'm going to choose one face palette for each project progress. So this is the Neo Bronzer by Kevin O'Quan. This, in my opinion, is a face palette. So why? Because it has a highlighter, a blush, and a bronzer. And I want to really review it because these I swatched, I took a picture, and I haven't used it. And I really want to let you guys know if this is worth it. Thankfully, I got this scent for PR, but to be honest, Kevin O'Quan is amazing in my opinion and I've, everything I have from the brand I've gotten it with my own money except for this one and another face palette I think yeah but these I haven't really tried and I really want to try it and let you guys know how it works because they just came up with blushes that I think are the same formula and then for blushes I chose five so the first one that's new to me it's the California blush by Benefit and this one I bought it never used it so I used it about twice and I don't even remember if I like it. So this is a blush that I picked up when it was first released and I haven't used it. And I think that was about a year ago. So this is one that I need to try and use some more. This is an old one in my collection but I haven't used it. It's the Ambient Lighting Blush in the shade Radiant Magenta. And you can see it right there. I think if I put it in this project I will use it because you guys know pink blushes for me are a struggle and I never reach for them. These are the Luminous ones and these I bought about two years or three years ago. And I used them for about two weeks and then I love them because Becca blushes are one of my all-time favorites but I've never reached for them again. And these are the shades Tiger Lily and Snapdragon. So one is super red and the other one is orange. Tiger Lily blush is the one that I'm wearing 
subtly today on the apples of my cheeks is the one that I just showed on my home, which is the Tarte Risqué. And this one I've used it for the past three days. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. So now that I use this one, I know that I want the nude shades from the Tarte blushes and I need to pull my mini Tarte blushes out because this is a beautiful formula. This, oh my goodness, looks beautiful on the cheeks. So this is the last product on this project progress for this next month. From today till June 17th. I'm gonna be traveling on June 8th or something like that, so I have to take a lot of these and I will show you maybe this one will take, maybe this project will take a little bit longer because around the time that I have to do the update, I will still be overseas. So I have to pick and choose what I'm going to take for those 15 days that I'm going to be away. So I hope you can keep that in mind when I do my review next month, that I'm going to have to choose a few of the products to take and the rest I have two weeks here to use them a lot. So yeah, guys, that's it for this video. I know you guys love them. Let me know if you love the picks for this month and let me know what you want to see from these products on other videos and other things that you want to see on my channel. Don't forget to go hit the subscribe button and also hit the notification bell so that you get notifications every time I upload a video. I put out videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Don't forget to go follow me on my social media. Instagram is basically the only social media platform that I use besides YouTube. And that's it guys. Give this video a thumbs up and I guess I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.